Windows Codename Longhorn Build 4039 is a Milestone 6 Alpha build compiled on the 27th of August 2003 of what was to become Windows Vista. This build is widely regarded as one of the most unstable builds, but also one of the most interesting. In this video we'll be looking at the setup process which you can see here. The setup process is only very slightly different to that seen in build 4029. The only difference that you should notice is that at the bottom it has a 1, 2, 3 kind of division of setup as we saw in the release to manufacturing of Windows Vista. The only difference between this and Vista is that in Vista there are only two stages of setup. There's one called collecting information and two called installing Windows. In build 4039 we have a third stage, three, called final countdown. Now this build which we'll be looking at in a moment when setup's finished is one of the most interesting, many people think, for many reasons, not least because it has so many features to look at. This build does have full working Windows Aero with window border transparency. However, this is known to be very buggy when trying to run it in a virtual machine. Um, personally, I spent quite a long time trying to get the transparency to work, but so far have not succeeded. I do know that it is possible and in the video I will be including screenshots of the actual transparency so you can still see it even though unfortunately I couldn't get it to work this time around. It's something that possibly I could always come back to later on, maybe when the series is finished, if I have more luck in the future. So here we are in Longhorn build 4039. Now I was talking earlier about this build being one of the most unstable builds. The main reason for that is because it's very slow at doing two things in particular. It's very slow at booting up. It usually takes about five minutes um, and you will just be staring at a black screen for, for five minutes. Um, now you wouldn't have seen that in the video because I would have edited all that out but it took uh, quite a long time to boot up. It's also very slow usually at rendering explorer windows. So just to start off if I just open my computer for you and it should usually takes quite a long time to actually load so I'll just leave that there and in real time you can see how long it takes. There you go, I mean that, that was not too bad that time, that was, that was, it, it can be a lot worse than that uh, shall we say. So anyway, now let's start with the user interface, so the Plex theme. Now, if you compare this to the video on 4029, you should notice a few changes. Firstly, the back and forward buttons are now different. They have a new design, sort of purpley. And this favorites button is also different. It doesn't look like the one from RE6 anymore. It looks, again, purpley, so a little bit different. Also, where we have the menu bar here, we now have the actual toolbar icons and next to it on the same row. Whereas in 4029 the icons were underneath and they were slightly larger. I also think the details pane at the top here is slightly smaller, but that might just be my 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 eyes, but I think it is slightly smaller. So let's go to pictures. And I have to admit I'm I'm I feel quite bad about this because I really, really I was really excited to show some um, features in particular that, that you can see when you look at pictures but I can't show you them because I couldn't get the, the desktop composition engine actually working with the transparency which is such a shame but what I will do is I'll talk about them and then I'll show you either some screenshots or a video of the features actually working so in build 4039 um, it comes with an interface called Fodio and basically what it does is it gives you two new view options for pictures. So if I go to the view menu, you know, I've added the options, but they won't work because like I said, DC is not working, but they're called carousel and panorama. Now when I click them, it will look completely boring to you. However, what I will do now is I'll overlay either, like I said, some screenshots or a video and I will show you these features working. So carousel and panorama are two new view modes for pictures which use the power of the DCE to give you some really nice visual effects when you're looking through your photos basically. So here they are working.
Now, if we come back to the desktop, um, I talked about the Plex theme. This build is actually, as far as we are aware, the last build to actually contain the Plex theme. So after this point, we do get a new visual style. Remember, as I said earlier in the series, the Plex theme was never meant to be a final theme anyway. It was always temporary. It was always meant to be a placeholder until they got the DCE working and until they got the Aero theme working. So many, many small but interesting features in build 4039. One of them is this. If you have a look at this, we've got uh, basically a shell location called communication history and in brackets prototype which is, means that it's not finished um, double click it doesn't do anything I'm not entirely sure what the, the function of this was meant to be obviously something to do with communication history maybe um, like chat logs from MSN I don't really know something like that but anyway that's there and that's new now let's go to assistance which was called help in build 4029 I believe so in build 4039 or by build 4039 we have this new help center which is called assistance at the moment now this new longhorn help center can be traced back to build 4015 however as far as i'm aware it was not functioning in those builds so in build 4029 for example i didn't show the help center because I'm going to hold my hands for you. I forgot about, I, I didn't even realize that it was in build 4029. But if you go back to the video, you should see there's, when I go to the help center, there's a button at the top and it says Longhorn Help Center. And if you click it, the Longhorn Help Center in build 4029 is actually broken. Um, but you do get, as a, as a little side note, a very interesting kind of prototype of user account control. You get a little prompt, a little dialog box that comes up and says, do you want to allow this application to run so that was interesting but this didn't work now build by build 4039 as you can see it now is actually loadable for a start and if i click on these things then you do get some kind of interface but again it's obviously not finished um, as a kind of introduction to this part of the video um, i do want to mention Lukash Marshik and Melcher, and I hope I pronounced those names correctly, from Longhorn.ms, which is an extremely useful website. And if you are interested in Longhorn or running these builds yourself, then go to Longhorn.ms. I'll put the link in the description as well. And they have lots of information about the builds themselves, what features you can find, for example, tutorials on how you can get the transparency working and um, how you can activate some kind of hidden features and that sort of thing. It's really, really interesting. So go and have a look at the website. Um, they've also been very helpful in um, recording some of these videos in the sense of, for example, when I looked at build 3718, um, they were very helpful in, in helping me get the transparency working. Um, so I, I, I do want to thank them um, for that. They've been very, very useful in doing this. Now few things left like I said first one if I just find an ISO file and double click is this so the burnt disk wizard um, appeared in build 4033 which I've not covered in the series but is obviously between this video and the last one um, it can however I believe be traced back to build 4028 although not not in a functional way um, this wizard does actually work as far as I believe um, and you can burn ISO files um, and as you can see uh, you get three options I can make a data disk a music and audio disk or a video disk now it knows that this ISO file is a data file so it's only gonna it's grayed out those options but um, it, it does work um, there you go so disk format disk burner I've not got one attached but there you go and this is the interface so you can either choose items to burn manually or you can use the ISO file there you go. put in a title and then it would burn it um, now this burn to disk wizard is interesting for more than one reason Firstly, it's interesting because it's a new feature. Secondly, it's interesting because it actually um, introduces 
um, a new, um, shall we say, standard for wizards that Microsoft introduced with Windows Vista. And um, they are known as either Aero Wizards or Vista Wizards. And it's kind of difficult to explain really. It's like a standard. So if you go, if you use Windows Vista or Windows 7 and you go to a troubleshooting wizard, for example, they all have the same kind of format. They have a next and cancel button at the bottom and then at the top they've got this universal back button which is always there and unless it's unavailable you can always click it to go back to a previous page in the wizard now before this standard of error wizards was introduced if you think back to XP for example what you used to have is you would have next and cancel at the bottom and then you'd have a back button next to the next button and all your kind of functions would be done using the buttons down here but since Aero wizards were introduced the back button is now at the top and this kind of ties in with the explorer interface where they've got the back button there um, and so on now a few more things left and these are things which I've got down as curiosities because even though they are interesting they're not actually functional so there are three things and in fact it might be easier if I type in um, the location I want to go to because it might take ages if I'm waiting for explorer so let's go to the movie maker folder oops us keyboard we've got a folder called movie maker in program files and there's an application called disk maker app if you double click it it doesn't work you just get this error okay but it's interesting because it's in a folder called movie maker and the name disk maker app now you can see if you have a look here you've got some pictures so there's this background picture if you go into the styles folder you can see it's it's a movie editing application basically i'm guessing like windows dvd maker which appeared i think did that appear in vista i can't remember now it appeared in at least windows 7 but it might be in vista i can't remember but it's that sort of thing now if you go to the windows folder there is a program in the windows folder called floating player there you go which again doesn't work you've just got an error um, I'm assuming it's some kind of media player. I don't really know. But it's there. Not functional, but it's there. Now, one more thing. Microsoft.net. Multimedia. And there's this thing called Media Ux Serve. Which, again, doesn't work. But seems to be, again, some kind of new media player application. Now, this one doesn't even throw up an error message. If I go to Task Manager, I believe we should see it in the processes. There it is. But it just doesn't appear at all. So, interesting. So like I said, those three things I've just got down as curiosities because they're not functional, but they are new features, um, which you don't find in earlier builds. So it's really, really interesting. Now, in terms of build 4039, that's it really the only other differences that i've noticed are first of all as you'd expect you get this new wallpaper so we've got a milestone 6 wallpaper which really really clashes actually i think with the blue theme it's red oh, that was a really really bad decision personally i think um and we've got this link on the desktop called file a longhorn bug now if you click it you can't get anywhere obviously you'd have to be on the microsoft intranet i would imagine for that to work if you were a developer uh, and and that's really it hope you've enjoyed this episode of windows on windows if you did and you're not a subscriber yet then please do subscribe there will be lots more coming the videos in this series are arriving approximately once every two weeks and i say approximately because sometimes as subscribers will probably have noticed by now it does take me a little bit longer because i do run into problems like the ones i had with this build and i've spent so many hours with this build trying to get it to work properly it's incredible um, it has been worth it because it's nice to have a look at it but I'm, I'm just quite sad actually that i didn't manage to get transparency working um, obviously with the video release schedule i have a I have to stick to it as much as I can so whereas I probably could have taken the next week to eventually get transparency working I didn't really have time um, but as I said earlier I can always come back to that in the future if I need to and if that's something that you would like to see then I have no problem with when I have a little bit more time maybe after the series is finished coming back and doing a video that maybe shows you how to get the transparency working and then actually demonstrating things like panorama 
carousel. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. I will see you in the next episode.